and in Logan Burns' new book, The Blood of Tyrants, George Washington and the Forging of the Presidency. Important political lessons of the past are outlined and given a fresh perspective. He joins us now. Logan, thanks so much for checking in from Newsmax New York. And in your book, you reveal that George Washington had a whole lot of opponents, among them some other founding fathers, for example, his vice president, George, uh, pardon me, John Adams. Talk to us about their relationship. Absolutely. It's funny. People think that those times are long past and they don't have any relevance to today, but they absolutely do. He faced a lot of the same challenges that we're still facing now. And what's amazing is he did it in the middle of a war and an invasion um, during the Revolutionary War and then after to try and hold the country together. And facing um, political opponents like John Adams, um, he was able to do so in a way that sort of rose above the, the petty political squabbles, uh, much like we see today. So, Logan, a lot of the things that we currently employ in wartime situations were really established during this time period, such as the way we treat hostiles, how we defend our people. Tell me a little bit about this and how it still applies. Absolutely. So you were just speaking about uh, torture, for instance. And back during the time, that was a big debate. It was a hot topic because Washington wanted to raise our standard of conduct in war above the barbaric wars of the past, as he called it. Um, but he quickly found that it may be a necessary evil. In some, some of his writings, he said that sometimes torture could be justified as a very last resort if it meant helping and saving American lives. And what we're seeing today is sort of with the report being released is kind of the opposite. Washington would do anything it took to protect the people. And it seems like today, maybe in, in some ways, we're doing the opposite in which we're releasing reports that may hurt us. Now, uh, Morgan, there's an interesting description. I want to make sure I got this straight. Do you refer to Washington as the, what, a, a type of dictator? What exactly is that phrase you used? <laughs> Yes, uh, so they pronounced uh, Washington the dictator um, of America in uh, <laughs> December of 1776. And, and when we hear dictator today, we think of it, it's a dirty word, and rightfully so. Back then, they would think of the Roman dictators of the past, and this would be a person that would receive the power needed to protect the country, and then hopefully, in the likeness of Cincinnati or, or Washington, the way he handled things, would give the power back. And go ahead, Morgan. Now, President George Washington executed the country's first immigration law, and of course, we're seeing a whole lot of that going on now. We don't have a lot of time left, but I'm curious to know how do you think President George Washington would handle the current immigration crisis? Interestingly enough, they spoke about immigration a lot. This was a, a big debate for them. And you think with this vast country and plenty of land, they wouldn't really mind, but they did. Um, they were they saw immigration, le well, legal immigration, as a very positive thing that these sort of industrious people were coming to our country and making it stronger. Um, but they sort of wanted to focus on attracting people who are, would one assimilate, and for them that meant learning English, uh, abiding by the laws. In fact, the Naturalization Act of 1790 uh, required uh, a period of uh, residency before you could get citizenship. And then number two, they wanted people who would contribute to society. So Madison wrote that we're not looking to just swell the catalog of people, we're looking to strengthen the community. And Hamilton, the immigrant himself, said, yes, we're looking for people who will make the economy stronger, who are going to fill the jobs and the roles that we can't fill ourselves. And in their day, that meant bringing um, information about sort of how to the industrial practices of Europe. And today, this sort of analogy would be sort of the new economy workers who have special skills that would help the economy would be very much welcomed. Fair enough. Logan Byrne, the new book, The Blo Blood of Tyrants, George Washington, and the Forging of the Presidency. Logan, thanks for your time, and America's Forum will continue.